right, anglers, we got another good top fishing video for you here today. We are going to talk about the Virginia Lakes Basin. This is a small set of lakes and streams just north of Lee Vining, California, that provides your best shot at a big fish in the Eastern Sierra. This is some of the best fishing there is, and I couldn't wait to make this video to help you guys get up there and catch some monster fish. So without further ado, let's get right into it. But before we get started, make sure you guys have something to drink, something to eat, because this is a pretty long video and I want you guys to be comfortable while you check out all the information and uh, it's gonna be a good one. So let's get into it. Let's start out by talking about some of the important information and facts of the area that will help you during your visit. So to kick off the important information section of this video, we're gonna talk about how to get there. So right when you're in Lee Vining, you are almost there. You wanna pass up uh, the Mono Lake area and uh, just be careful. There's uh, some sketchy driving in through here and there's always some speed traps in here. Uh, always some kind of CHP activity in this area with speed traps. So just be careful when you're headed north, watch your speed and uh, you're gonna go up the pass. And once you hit, what is marked on here as the Conway Summit, you're gonna see a left turn right across the street from this Conway Summit sand and salt storage for the uh, Caltrans. So make your left and head up the mountain. So once you get up the mountain, you're gonna keep going. Now, if you're watching this video and you're thinking about headed up there in a springtime, uh, like for the opener or near that time, you need to be aware that on, even on some of the lesser snow years, there can be ice on this road all the way into June. It, it is really cold up here. It's a very high elevation lake, and there are a lot of shadows along this highway that maintain ice patches on the road. So just take your time going up this mountain. It's really tempting to hit the gas as you get to the final stretches before you reach your fishing spot but I'm telling you, they have a lot of accidents on this road. So make sure you guys take your time, make sure you're prepared with chains or whatever it is you need to keep your car on the road. So before we get into the fishing spots, you're gonna pass through a little cabin area and uh, make sure you understand that in this area, you are not gonna have much cell signal. So don't get lost, make sure you're paying attention and map your way to get here. So. Here we are at our first fishing spot. We're gonna talk about Little Virginia Lake. So to get to Virginia, Little Virginia Lake, you wanna make a left onto Little Virginia Lakes Road, and you're gonna head down toward the resort. And uh, this is where it gets a little bit dicey on the information. You guys need to pay attention to this section um, as it does uh, affect anyone fishing this area. So this is a leased land area for the resort. And uh, so essentially they almost own this area. They don't really own it, but they are leasing the land and they have the rights to the area. Now, what does that mean for you as an angler? Well, if you're just fishing it from the shore, it doesn't, it doesn't really affect you much. You can use this parking lot in front of their resort and uh, anywhere that there's public parking, you can park there. However, if you are planning on launching a float tube or a private watercraft from their little boat ramp right here, you will need to pay them the money. Now, I don't know what it will cost by the time you go there, so check with the resort on that. It could cost $5 or it could be $10, um, but as of today, they are still charging to park there if you are launching your float tube. Now, that's a, it's a hot topic. It was, uh, there was a lot of arguments between the resort and anglers. There was a lot of really big fights up here uh, between the resort and anglers over the years because of that. And uh, I, don't, I think that should change just a little uh, personal opinion there. I think the resort should really just second guess that and just, just forget it and just let people launch there for free. Um, the bad press is just isn't worth it, but just be prepared for the idea that they can charge you to, to launch here. Now, if you're gonna park just to fish, you don't need to pay. You can just park and walk in and fish. Now, another tip, 
You could also park, get your uh, float tube out and walk across the bridge here and launch somewhere else on the lake and you don't have to pay. So there's just a small thought there. Um, but other than that, that's all the info as you get to the lake. So let's get right into the fishing, uh, which is the most important thing that you need to know when you get to this lake. So for the fishing on Little Virginia, as you can see from the satellite shot, and uh, we will be inserting drone shots throughout this whole video. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy those angles. Uh, but as you get there, you'll see even when you walk up, you can tell it's not a very deep lake. And uh, you can see with the satellite shot, there's like this bowl feature. It's like a giant bowl and uh, it's really not that deep. But the water is very clear and very, very cold. And the fish just absolutely thrive at this lake. So once you get there, you guys need to understand that almost the whole lake has a trail system around it. There are certain sections because of the kind of like a, a marshy feature that you can't really walk um, along the shoreline in certain areas and we'll get it. So we're going to kind of walk around the lake and talk about the different spots. And that's how we'll do it as if you're walking the lake and fishing it that way. So uh, before we get to any other spots, we're going to talk about the boat ramp area first. This is one of my favorite places when you first park and walk up is just to grab a rod with a spoon on it. Thomas Buoyant, get your favorite spoon or even a jig, but I really like spoons here. And uh, just walk around past that little boat ramp area and fish these rocky spots right here. Why? Because they plant the lake right there. And a lot of times, especially right after a plant, the fish are just hanging around. You can almost see right there, there's like a little bit of a drop off right here. And um, this is a good spot to cast. And uh, if you're really, really just not in the mood to, to walk very far, uh, you could set up shop right here with a bait rod. Just be aware that people are going to be paddling out in front of you quite often through the summertime. It could be real busy right here, uh, but there are some great fish caught right here. Some of the bigger fish I've caught here were actually caught right there. So definitely worthwhile to stop and fish this area. Again, very shallow and uh, doesn't get a lot of weeds at this lake, but they can grow a little bit um, toward the end of summer around August. It starts to get a little bit of uh, weed patches going on. Um, the other spot nearby is right here. You can walk along the edge and uh, depending on the lake level, now it usually stays pretty consistent. This is a natural lake. There is no dam or any other control really. Uh, so it is a natural lake, but right here, there's a small trail that leads along in here uh, to the outlet. And right here is the outlet and you could fish in here now. There's not a lot of room to back cast, meaning you can't reach back and huck it out there real far um, because you got a lot of bushes and trees behind you. And it, it's just kind of a compact area, but it's a nice place to flip a jig or uh, just cast a bait just kind of short. And uh, you will get into some fish for here uh, for sure. There's always fish tucked into this outlet. And again, um, if you have waders on, this is a great place to walk close to shore and just uh, stand over here and cast a spoon into the flow of the outlet and a very, very, very productive area to hit and uh, so close to your car. I mean, look how close you can, you can get your waders on and just and walk over here and you're into the fish within steps of your vehicle. Awesome spot to fish, always productive. And like I said, um, there are some submerged boulders and uh, you may even see some of those in the drone shots that I'm throwing up during this portion of the video. Um, so if you want to hit the next spots, it's highly recommended. You do not walk along the shore to get there. You will probably fall in the water and it's not a, a good lake to do that with the temperature of this lake. You want to get out of your car and walk to the right and cross over this little bridge and head across through the trail over here. Now you'll have options to drop down and start fishing into this area, or you can continue on the trail to reach some of the back parts of the lake, which we'll get to soon. Um, this area is not one of my favorites. It is one of the first spots um, and it always produces, and uh, it's not necessarily a bad place, but it is just not one of my more favorite spots to stop. 
uh, but it is an option if you don't feel like walking very far. You can see there are quite a few goat trails in this area that uh, people have created to get down here. Um, but it is one of the first spots that you can. I recommend you hook the left, take the high road up here, and stay along this trail. Now, these spots along this back area here begin some of the better shore fishing of this little lake. And uh, right here is uh, probably the first one. Now, it's a little deceiving. Uh, it looks like there's really just one spot, but there's actually quite a bit of shoreline in this first spot and you can access it pretty easy. So in the summer, this whole shoreline will be packed with bait fishermen. If you get up here by 9.30 in the morning, let's say you slept in at your hotel down there in um, you know, Lee Vining or wherever you were staying, you're probably not gonna get a spot right here at all. It'll be full of people in the summer. Very, very rarely is this not packed with, with uh, fishermen. And don't forget, right here you have a resort full of uh, cabins with people that'll beat you here. So get there early if you wanna get these spots that I'm about to be talking about. Otherwise, you'll likely not get one. Um, so moving along, down along the backside now, this is where you get into some primo spots back in this corner. There's lots of room back here, tons of room to fish. And um, you can maybe even arrive here a little later and you'll score a spot. But depending on the lake level, some of these spots can be inundated all the way to the bushes. And you may not get into uh, areas that look clear here. In the in This was probably taken in the fall or near the fall. Um, or on a lower water year, but this is typically full all the way to the bushes right here, and it can be real tight. So make sure that you account for that when you're getting here. But as you can see, there are some nice drop-offs back here, and uh, it's a great place to get into some of the bigger fish um, in, of this lake, especially in this back section of the lake, and very popular with the lures. And uh, you'll see a lot of uh, jig companies up here, uh, shooting video for products and stuff. This is a very popular area for them to come because uh, the action can be pretty good. The advantage of Little Virginia Lake among other lakes that are in the Sierra is it's little. This is just a puddle. It's literally a, almost a pond. It's barely a lake. And uh, they, they put an enormous amount of fish in this little lake. The only downside is this lake is highly dependent on plants now. 10 years ago, there was a great amount of holdovers here every year, and there was a time that you would come here and fish and it would be slow. But that has definitely changed with the popularity of this lake over the years, and particularly after COVID hit. This was one of the big time lakes that people started to flock to and became very popular. So when this lake is planted, it is fantastic fishing. Some of the best in the entire Sierra Nevada and uh, fishes very well. It receives fishing game plants. It receives private plants from Bridgeport Fish Enhancement and uh, all kinds of fish get dumped in here, but it is very, very dependent on fish. So definitely uh, can be hit and miss when uh, fishing is good and bad. So just take that into mind as you head up here. Now, as you see, there is an inlet to this lake and then it's kind of hidden on this but we're going to put it up on the drone shot, but there's a small creek that runs in between right here. You can see it. It's just a small little creek that goes in between these two lakes. And uh, it is an awesome, awesome uh, little inlet right here. Now, this inlet is much better targeted by a flow tube than it is by foot. By foot, you are likely going to be traipsing through mud and swamp, and it is not a fun little walk. So, um, if you want to hit this, definitely buy a boat. They rent little paddle boats here, or you can get on a float tube, which I love. This is one of the best float tubing lakes in the Sierra. Such a fun spot. Um, but that's my recommendation if you're going to hit the inlet. And uh, like I said, we got some drone shots throughout this, so hopefully that'll help your perspective. So again, fishing this back portion of the lake is uh, probably your best bet. Um, this spot by the boat ramp, also very good, but because it's such a small lake, there's just not much technical about this lake. A lot of people think that you need special gear to fish here and 
only this jig works or that lure works. But honestly, guys, this is like a giant trout farm when it's got fish. When they plant this lake, you cannot miss. You can throw anything you want out there um, and you will catch fish. It's one of the easiest places in the entire Eastern Sierra to catch a trout. Um, but it is, like I said, very dependent on those plants. So with that, moving on to Big Virginia Lakes. So as we move up into the canyon, you will come to Big Virginia Lake. And how do you get there? Well, you don't need to make the left to go to Little Virginia. Just keep moving up the road. It's literally going to dead end into the parking lot for Big Virginia. Um, this is a very popular spot for hiking. So these parking lot can get busy. You can see all the cars in this shot. And it really does look like that here most of the summer. And that's mainly because of the hiking. These are not all anglers out here, so don't worry. It's not going to be crowded at this lake uh, for fishing. This is all hikers, and um, it's going to be like that almost the entire summer. I've never not seen it pretty full. Um, there are other areas where they're supposed to park. You can see Trailhead, um, and there's some parking spots over here they can use, but mainly they want people to park here for the long-term parking and uh, for obvious reasons, just better supported right here. So just expect that. I've never not had a parking spot here, even on busy days. There's always a couple spots open. The problem, um, believe it or not, has been van lifers. Now, this isn't an attack on people that do the van life, but they have been parking here and camping here multiple days in this parking lot, and they are taking up a lot of spots these days. And I'm talking 20 30 vans parked in this parking lot. So if anything, that's where your competition is coming from. Other than that, almost always a parking spot, especially if you're there earlier in the day, not a problem. Um, but once you get there, you can fish pretty much right from here. You can walk right down and this is all great access. There's tons and tons of shore access. If you're ever over here at Little Virginia and it's slow, that's what I love about this area is you can walk right over here and, or move your car and fish this lake and you can be in a completely different habitat and have all kinds of success here that you didn't have at Little Virginia. Now, Big Virginia tends to hold fish better because it is bigger and it takes the, the anglers a lot longer to sweep this lake of all the fish. In fact, I would say that this lake actually holds um, year-round trout a lot better than Little Virginia does because of the size and depth of this lake. So, uh, but right when you get there, you'll see you have, like I said, you have shore access and uh, there's a little trail. Now this trail is not easy. It's kind of rocky and changes direction. And the last time I was out there, there were a couple of trees that were blown over and uh, you had to kind of duck under and jump over. And uh, it was kind of an obstacle course to get over here. But once you make it over, you're going to see there is a huge waterfall back here that is beautiful. You can go check that out. And again, we're going to be putting up drone shots throughout this uh, video. So you guys will have better perspectives of this area. Uh, but like I said, there is a trail that runs along. Now, once you get to this inlet, um, I recommend... Uh, getting some kind of like in the summer, you could just wear some sandals or like some, uh, you know, basic, uh, like kind of like hiking sandals and you'll be fine. But once you get over here, you'll see you can walk right across this inlet. It's like real shallow water and then just keep going along the shore. It can get a little bit steep over here, but you'll see there is a trail that runs around these bushes and you can get all the way back to this side of the lake. Now, the back side of the lake here is where the big fish prowl is in this big drop off in the bowl feature um, in this whole area. Now, this is a very remote, steep shore area. This is not a place that you want to take a three year old. But I would say that if you're decent in hiking and, and you're adventurous, you can see there are some trail systems in the back side of this lake. And uh, this is a very deep drop off. And there is always some nice fish that are caught back here. Another great option to, is to float tube this lake. 
and reach these back corners of the lake with ease. And uh, it's a fun, fun place to fish and to get away from people is to hike back here into this corner. Um, this far, far corner right here is actually kind of hard to get to and uh, it can be real steep and slow going. And uh, but it is uh, rewarding. There are some great fishing spots back here and you will have a lot of luck. Um, another great option is to go to the left. So when you get to the parking lot, hit the shoreline and walk out to the left and uh, make your way over to a, this inlet. And again, we'll put another drone shot up right now showing what this looks like from the air mm -hmm. and uh, just another fantastic spot and uh, easy to access. You can see a well-maintained trail and uh, goes all the way out over this way. Now, you can see there is some uh, little docks and even private cabins over this way and uh, all leased by the Forest Service. And uh, there's the outlet to the lake in between Little Virginia. I really like that. And you can see somebody a long time ago dredged out like a channel right there. Uh, probably on a low water year, they dredged it out so it would flow between the lakes and uh, probably so this did not dry out. But uh, yeah, I mean, easy access here and uh, incredible views. I mean, you can see all around you when you fish this place, including Little Virginia, the mountains behind these lakes are just incredible. You'll almost forget to cast sometimes because you're just checking out the views but particularly in the morning when the sun hits it, in the afternoon, the sun could be kind of blinding up in those uh, mountains. It'll shine right in your face. But in the mornings, man, you could really look up and uh, check it all out. So this back pool is another one on this side with the inlet. This whole area, very remote and tough to hike to. You can see the trail kind of fades. There's not really a lot of foot traffic over here for good reason. It's very rugged over here. But on low water years, you can see there is a little bit of a shoreline and uh, see that there's snow. And uh, that's because uh, these are basically old glaciers. And uh, sometimes in the bigger snow years, they can return. They can have year round snow here like they did this last year after a big, big snow. So definitely a uh, favorite of mine. Um, you definitely want to let your lures, your baits, everything drop down here a lot more than at Little Virginia being, you know, 10, 15 feet deep to over 60, 80 feet deep over here. So really deep lake and uh, just an incredible, incredible stop and one of my favorite lakes in the area. Okay, moving on to a nearby lake just to the south. Um, What's well, actually, I guess, to the east, but let's just call it downhill uh, from both Big Virginia and Little Virginia is Trumbull. Trumbull looks like a green lake from here, and it kind of is. Even in person, it looks like this, and uh, that's just the nature of the lake. It is a very weedy lake, especially in the summer. The weeds can pretty much choke this lake out. But in the spring, um, it is a very, very good lake to try. Uh, very shallow and not the best shore access. There are some off-road trails leading from the campground. Now you can see here's a campground real close to the lake, very popular campground, very busy in the summer. And uh, But once you get down to the bottom, there's like a dead end here, and then you can begin to fish the lake. Um, the best option here, hop out of the car, take the trail around the lake. You can see there's a small trail, um, very rugged hike. This is not uh, for people without mo you know, great mobility, but you can hike all around back here. Another option is flow tubing it. Now, be careful. There are some submerged trees and such in this lake, so you can pop your tube out here. I've actually heard of a few people doing that and it was not a fun time. So make sure you guys are just careful where you're uh, tubing around. Um, but this is a very shallow lake, but they do receive the same plants. They get fish and game plants. They get private plants. And every year people catch some really big fish out of this lake. And uh, I would say uh, because of the access issues and it's not so easy to fish, a lot of people don't fish it. 
and uh, it can it can maintain some nice fish a lot later into the season than than Little Virginia. Little Virginia right over here fishes out in a week after a plant. Most of the fish in there are gone, but Trumbull can fish pretty well well after the plants because of the lack of people hitting it. So I recommend taking the time and uh, explore this lake, cast where you can. Uh, lures are effective because you can really get it out there and come back. Uh, but if you can get a tube out here, that's the way I would hit this lake. All three of these lakes are just incredible by flow tube. And uh, as you can tell, because I mentioned it a lot, and the reason it's a very, very good way to hit these lakes. So Trumbull is on the list of spots to try uh, for this canyon, definitely in the top spot. So moving on, let's talk a little bit about the backcountry lakes. So to hit these backcountry lakes, you can park here um, in the uh, main Virginia Lakes parking lot and make your way up the trail. And there is a trail that marks, you can see it right there. There's like a little trail that makes your way up through here. Um, you can also park out this way and uh, walk up the cutoff there. But however you want to access it, you want to walk up the main trails here and not far before you know it, boom, you hit Blue Lake. Now, this is one of the first of many backcountry lakes in the area and uh, just provides some great fishing really close. This is probably one of the easiest backcountry lakes that you can access anywhere in the Eastern Sierra and does provide some pretty good fishing. This is a great place to practice your bubble fly combo. If you're not sure what a bubble fly combo is, just look it up. Uh, type in bubble fly into Google and you'll see what that looks like. Uh, fly fishing, obviously uh, very popular in these backcountry lakes, but there are really no regulations that say you have to use flies or anything. You can use whatever you want back here, uh, but very good hiking. Some of the easier trails that you can do to get to the backcountry and uh, well, well worth it. But as you can see, you can get back to Cooney Lake. Um, this is another spectacular view. And uh, all the way back into Frog Lakes, there's some small brookies back in here. But a uh, very short hike, guys. Very, very short and uh, quite easy to do. And uh, highly recommended to uh, make the trip uh, right out of the lake. Now, if you notice, there's a red lake here right above Big Virginia in between, kind of in between Little and Big Virginia. Another small lake containing some small trout to go for. So. 100% worthwhile and uh, just a great spot. Now you can see there's Moat Lake and all kinds of fishing spots up in here. And that's why, I mean, look at all these spots that we've talked about in such a compact area. And uh, we haven't even covered all of it. We got one more spot to talk about. So for the last spot, we're going to talk about the creek itself, Virginia Creek. And this also receives private plants, state plants, and uh, it's just a fantastic spot to try for your first creek trout. Um, all kinds of access. All these roads are mostly public and uh, can take you down. But you want to get downstream into these campgrounds. Some of these areas are uh, probably a little better to access the creek, but does provide fish and is available. Um, to catch trout almost all the way through fall until this is just basically snowed in and you can't get up here. So definitely check this out. Little Virginia uh, Lakes is the exit and then pretty much out of there all the way downstream you have a nice shot. Um, again, the best access are these campgrounds and these roads that lead between the campgrounds. You can see one right here um, in these primitive campgrounds. I've actually stayed in a few of these and uh, it is excellent. Just be aware there are a lot of there's a lot of bear activity in this area. So pack your food uh, right and you guys probably won't have a problem. But um, don't be surprised to see a black bear if you're hiking around and you're fishing. Uh, but that creek runs all the way um, down below the, the Conway Summit and heads out toward this direction. So you can see it goes and goes and goes. And all of this is fishable 
up 395. So definitely recommend trying that. And uh, it is a, a very fun little creek. So, uh, but that wraps it up, guys, for the Little Virginia or Big Virginia, or as they know, Virginia Lakes Basin. Uh, very popular um, place, and for good reason, because it is it has so many options and such a compact area. I mean, there's even a resort right there in the mix with some small cabins. Um, I know they're not very cheap if you look it up. They're pretty pricey to stay there, but there are lots of good camping options in the area. And uh, when I usually fish this area, I'm usually either camped in the primitive areas or even out here by Mono, um, or I just stay in Bridgeport, which is like a 15-minute drive north. I just stay here if I'm not camping. And you guys can get into there and um, and spend all of the time in Virginia Lakes Basin. Um, I've actually taken day trips up here from Southern California and uh, just to fish uh, Virginia Lakes Basin for the day. So awesome, awesome fishing, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed this one. I enjoyed putting it together. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while. So uh, check out those drone shots again. Go back and watch the video. If there's any other questions, um, you can post them up here and we'll see if we can get them all answered. If you're new to fishing and you just need more information, check out my Patreon. That's down in the link below. $5 once a month and it gets you in on the uh, drawings that we do. We do giveaways every month over there. But it's a great place and a great resource if you're new to fishing and you want more information on spots just like this and uh, fishing pretty much anywhere in the West. So that's why we are Trout West, and we will see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.